An urgent manhunt right now underway in Mexico after one of the world's most infamous drug cartel leaders shocked and embarrassed officials by breaking out of a maximum security prison last night. Joaquin Guzman, known by the nickname El Chapo, created the cartel blamed for triggering the drug war that has killed tens of thousands of people in Mexico and also supplied much of the cocaine, marijuana and heroin on the streets of this country. Today, El Chapo is out there somewhere. Sarah Gannon with me, also with us. Legal analyst Danny Savalos and Philip Holloway. Guys, thank you for being here. Sarah, everyone knows this name, not only in Mexico, but around the world. This is such a dangerous and destructive man. How on earth did he get out again? Well, this is a man not just dangerous and destructive, but also notorious with his cartel for building tunnels. We know that he used them to traffic drugs across the U.S. Mexican border underneath. The border. That's why uh, they're believed to have supplied much of the illicit heroin and cocaine that's in this country. And it's tunnels that authorities say he used to break out of a Mexican prison for the second time. They call him El Chapo, or Shorty, for his small five foot six frame. But his legend is enormous. And now the world powerful and deadly drug trafficking kingpin has broken out of prison in Mexico again. Joaquin Guzman is the notorious drug boss who runs the Sinaloa cartel, widely believed to be the biggest supplier of heroin and cocaine in the United States. Authorities say this time he escaped through a hole in the shower area of the Altiplano prison. The tunnel leads to a vertical passage about 10 meters deep and it had a ladder and stairs. This tunnel has PVC tubing, ventilation and lighting. His latest escape, adding to El Chapo's legend. In Mexico, he's a towering figure of intrigue, the subject of books, songs and folklore. And he's wanted on both sides of the border, in the U.S. on federal trafficking and organized crime charges. His cartel notorious for tunneling drugs under the U.S.-Mexican border. In fact, U.S. officials wanted him extradited, fearing exactly what happened, that he'd pull off another escape. Now, Chapo Guzman escaped captivity, a prison, in 2001. He has 12 years left to his sentence. But I'm concerned about that happening again in Mexico. Born into a poor family in the Sinaloa state when the drug trade was evolving, Guzman amassed a powerful empire, one that he continued running from behind bars after his first arrest in 1993. His reputation only grew as he spent 13 years on the run after escaping from prison in 2001, sneaking out in a laundry cart in a plot that allegedly cost him $2.5 million in bribes. He was caught and rearrested just last year at this resort in Mazatlan, in his home state of Sinaloa. Now a massive manhunt for the cartel leader is underway yet again. Now, different people who work inside that prison are being questioned by authorities and officials in the United States are pledging their support to Mexican authorities to help bring him back into custody but unofficially they're pretty upset they had said that they wanted to extradite him back here to the United States after he was caught last year after 13 years on the run out of fears that he would escape again and those fears poppy came true this morning it happened just a year after <laughs> He, he, they finally were able to put him in prison again after 13 years on the lam. Sarah, thank you very much. Danny Savalos, Philip Holloway with me again. Danny, to you first. You know the Sinaloa region incredibly well. Tell us a little bit about it uh, and also what sort of authority, if any, the United States has if they do catch him again. I do. My uh, father and family lived in Mazatlan where he was first apprehended in 2014, just a few blocks away from the condominium, the Miramar, right there, right there on the water. Wow. Beautiful, beautiful location. But... For decades, it has been plagued by crime. And only until recently has Mexico even begun to institute judicial and law enforcement reform, first in 2008 and again in 2014. They are moving towards creating the tools to effectively prosecute organized crime. But as we can see, 
there is still problems with corruption. Corruption uh, is a, a pervasive part of Mexican government from the executive level all the way down to uh, prisons. And prisons, it, unquestionably, if, certainly if we have a case up here in New York where there's alleged uh, prison officials being involved or prison employees involved in an escape, right. then multiply that by a thousand down in Mexico where yeah. this cartel has just massive influence and ma can put massive pressure on people to do stuff for money or upon threat of death. Right, exactly, and that's what we heard from Tom Fuentes, that, you know, these workers in the prison, it's not only, you know, it's that they're being threatened, what he could do to their families from the connections he has on the outside. Philip, you're not only an attorney, a former police officer. When you're talking about this hunt, and again, we're going to see the coordination between U.S. officials and Mexico trying to track him down, what challenges are they facing uh, because he is so well connected and people are so scared of him on the outside? This is a man who's got an organization, Poppy, with tentacles that literally reach everywhere around the entire planet. So when this guy is able to either pay somebody off or even to coerce them to do his bidding, he will find a way out of that jail. His organization is expert at tunneling. That's how they get things into the country. That's how they get things out of the country. I'm talking about the U.S. and other countries. And it's how he was allowed to stay on the lam for 13 years following his arrest the first time around. So I I don't think that he's going to be caught if we don't catch him or somebody doesn't catch him in the very near future. I think he's gone forever. And that's what the U.S. was so afraid of and why we've right. tried to get him extradited to the United States. So, Danny, do, does the United States have any sort of legal ground to do anything on this front right now other than help try and track him down? Well, the same thing you have with any fugitive, which is try to track that person down. But do they have jurisdiction to prosecute or indict somebody abroad? Absolutely they do. And they're exercising that jurisdiction, not only against El Chapo. They can't uh, carry Chapo. him out if they can't get him back here. Exactly. And that really creates not only a political issue, but a legal issue. Uh, obviously, Mexico has jurisdiction within its borders. But what is the political effect of extraditing this man back to the United States for prosecution here? What is the effect? What would that show uh, the to not only law enforcement in the United States, but also could it be a big political blow to law enforcement and the judicial system in Mexico if, number one, they cannot prosecute him, and number two, if convicted, they cannot hold this man? Yeah, I think, Philip, from the perspective of a former police officer, not to say that you were on the chasing the, these guys around all the time, but it, it's interesting to see that with his, in his case, for example, we didn't see a huge out, that he didn't go out like that, 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 that he went out with his hands up, they arrested him and brought him down. Second time around, they find him. Is this someone you think that comes back alive in prison? Well, that's, of course, the $64,000 question. I, I, I go back to what I said. I don't think he's going to be caught, at least not anytime soon, because if you look at the level of preparation that went into this tunneling, I mean, they had lighting, they had ventilation. It was a mile long, and it even had a motorized cart to take dirt and presumably him out in a rapid fashion. So I think he got a jump on, on the authorities, and, and unless the U.S. or somebody can, can yeah. capture him on our own indictment, and bring him here and maybe put him in a supermax, he may be on the run forever. Before we go, Sarah, is there any concern that he might cross the border, try to come into the United States? Well, uh, not that we've heard from U.S. officials, but on the tunneling issue, you know, when you talk about will he be caught, that's a major thing that people are talking about today is his network is so big. He has so many people protecting him, surrounding him. Just to give you an example, this is a man who was able to run this cartel from behind prison. Now that he's outside of prison and has a right. more freedom, think about how much power yeah. this man has. And even in the, the small town where he's from and some other South Central Mexican towns, He's actually quite well liked. Right. So he has the support and of the people where he lives, and that gives him a tremendous amount of power and takes that power yeah. away from authorities who are trying to catch we'll him. We'll talk a lot more about that reach that he has in getting people to like him uh, a little bit later in the show. Guys, thank you all very much. I appreciate it.